Alyssa, blogger at Melly Sews and designer behind Blank Slate Patterns. Today we're going to be sewing a baby's crisscross dress. This is a super easy project because there are no closures and there are only two pieces of fabric to deal with. It is a great staple for summer because those baby bottoms look really cute in bloomers with this on top. And best part is that there is a free option for this pattern in some sizes, as well as the pattern in my pattern shop. So let's go ahead and get started. I've got the link for you right here about where you can go to find out pattern information. So I'm gonna assume that you've already gone, you've gotten your pattern, and you are ready to start sewing. I've cut out my two pieces of fabric because this pattern is reversible. I'm getting two dresses for the work sewing one, which is awesome. And the first step is going to be to um, iron down the edge on the, this is actually the back shoulder of the dress, and you'll see that later. But I need to turn it down half an inch and then press it. So I'm just gonna turn over here, turn that down and press it. And I need to repeat this on the other side of this piece of fabric and on both sides of the other piece of fabric. So right here, I've got it folded and pressed. Right here, I've got it folded and pressed. And then on my other piece of fabric, same thing, folded and pressed on one side, folded and pressed on the other side. That is going to help us with the last step of the pattern, the fact that we went ahead and pressed that. So now what we need to do is we're going to take our two pieces of fabric and we're going to place them right sides together. And you're just going to match up all along the neckline and the straps and the armholes. And you're going to unfold where you just pressed and you're going to match that all up as well. Okay, now that I've got the fabric placed right sides together, let me show you what we're going to sew. We're going to be sewing everything except the top flat edges of the shoulders, which that would be these two edges here. So I'm actually going to start here. I will be sewing all the way around the bottom. I'll continue to sew all the way around the bottom and then up to the other edge of the strap. And then I'm going to start here and I'm going to come sew all the way around the armhole to the top edge of the strap here. And then I'm going to start on the next side of the strap, sew all the way around the neck hole. Stop there. And then Stopping there, I'm going to start here and sew around the other armhole. So it is a total of, let's see, let me hold this up so you can see. We're going to sew one long seam all across the bottom, second seam will be the armhole, third will be the neckline, and fourth will be the other armhole. A total of four seams we're going to be sewing. Now, if you feel like your fabric is going to slip or travel on you or move, um, go ahead and pin all around the perimeter of the dress for all those seams that we're going to sew. Let's make sure that the fabric stays nicely aligned with each other and then we're going to go ahead and start sewing. I'm using a one half inch seam allowance on this project just like the pattern indicates. Now that I've got my two pieces of fabric sewn together, right sides together, I need to clip the curves. Clipping the curves removes excess fabric from inside curves, and it also allows outside curves flexibility without fabric bunching up in them. So we're going to go ahead and on the curves, all you need to do to clip them is you're gonna cut little triangular, pieces of fabric out of the curve there. You're going to cut pretty close, almost as close as you can to the seam that you just sewed, but you do not want to cut through the seam. Make sure that you don't do that. So I need to clip curves around the curved edge of the skirt. I need to clip curves in the sleeve or the armhole openings.
and in the neckline. Okay, now that my curves are all clipped, it's time to turn my dress right side out. Now since I did not sew through the shoulder portions of the dress, that's what I'm going to need to turn. So I'm just going to start on one end and I'm going to start turning the fabric right side out. And the more fabric you get through that opening, the easier it becomes to start pulling the right side of the fabric through. And I just want to keep pulling and turning until I get all of those shoulder pieces turned all the way out. And the dress basically looks like it did before I sewed it, except now there's a seam running all around the edge. So here is my turn dress. I've got one side, the other side. I've got some shoulder straps and some back straps. And now what I need to do is press this all around the edges. So I'm going to go ahead and turn to the ironing board and I'm going to be pressing all around the edges. The one thing I do want to be careful of when I'm pressing is that crease line that I made on the shoulders, the very first step we did, I don't want to iron that out. I actually want to use that crease line to turn the fabric to the inside right along that crease line and we'll have a folded edge there that will get pressed. So if you can see, this is turned to the inside. And I'm going to leave it turned like that. Nice and even, and that's going to get pressed right like that. In fact, just to remind myself not to unfold that and to kind of hold it in place, I'm going to go ahead and add a couple of pins here. Now the pins I'm using are um, a type that have heads that are glass or um, heat resistant so that they won't melt. If you just have regular plastic headed pins and they don't specifically say anything about being heat resistant, be really careful about getting those near the iron because you don't want the plastic to melt onto your iron. All right, so let's press. Make sure when you're pressing that you've gotten the seam all the way, all the way out. Don't let any of it fold towards itself on the inside, um, and it will tend to want to do that. So you just have to work with it kind of with your fingers for a little bit before you press and to make sure that those fabrics are being pressed right along the stitching line. Okay, so I've got the edges of my dress all pressed now, and you can see those are pressed nice and cleanly. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to be removing the pins that I had used in the shoulders and then here I'm going to show you how we turn this dress into a crisscross dress instead of just a big flat piece of fabric. So we're first going to fold in the two back edges. We'll see how they go like that. And then I am going to fold the opposite strap and I'm going to push it in to the back shoulder um, opening that we left that's opposite it. So I'm crisscrossing these over each other. That's why we call this a crisscross dress. And then I'm going to get it nice and flat. And I want it pushed about half an inch to the inside of that opening. And then I'm going to add a couple of pins in there because what we'll do is we'll sew right across this opening and that will close all the holes and it will create this crisscross dress. So I've got one side done and now I'm taking this side and I'm crossing it over to this side. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just pushing it into that hole and making sure it goes in half an inch. And then I'm adding a couple of pins to make it stay in place. After you've pinned the shoulders, you're going to want to go ahead and stitch them. We're just going to put those right in the machine. And I'm going to stitch with about a quarter inch seam. And that will make sure that we catch 
the um, front and the back of that opening that we pushed the strap into. And I am going to back stitch on those seams. Then I'll trim off the extra threads, remove the pins. If you choose to sew over your pins, make sure that you're going slowly when you get there. You don't want to be going fast and break a needle and have it fly up and hit you. Now once you've sewn those straps, one final thing you can add if you'd like, and this is optional, is you can top stitch all the way around the edges of the dress. Doing this is going to make sure that none of the edges really have to be um, wrangled back into place to be repressed. And also, be, by crisscrossing it, you've kind of created a Mobius strip here. So you literally can start on one end of the dress and then just keep going until you get back to the place you start and you will have top stitched every seam on the dress. It's kind of cool. So I'm going to go ahead and top stitch and I'm going to do that about an eighth of an inch from the edge. So, once I've got those threads trimmed, here's my little dress. There's the front, and there's the back with the crisscross. And if I just flip these over, I've got a different dress on the front and a different dress on the back, the crisscross. So there we have it.